Are you struggling to schedule your shoot? Tired of constantly rearranging shots? Then have I got the app for you! Hello filmmakers, Ash here and welcome to Film It Yourself. Scheduling your shoot efficiently is one of the most critical things you can do in pre-production to ensure a smooth shoot day. But doing it by hand on paper can be time consuming and inefficient, which is why I recommend you use an app like Shotlister. Shotlister is an app that lets you build fully customizable schedules for your shoots that update in real time. This way, you always know exactly how much time you're running behind or ahead. Plus, its flexibility allows you to reorder shots on the fly, something that would be extremely difficult otherwise. So say goodbye to paper, and let's jump into building a schedule using Shotlister. First, just a heads up, Shotlister is a paid app, and in order to get the full functionality out of it, you need to sign up for a yearly subscription, which costs $13.99. But Trust me, the time this baby is gonna save you will be well worth that cost in the long run. Okay, so now that we've got that out of the way, the first step to setting up your schedule is adding a new project. You can do this by tapping on the plus icon in the top right corner. From there, enter in the name of your film and tap save. Next, you wanna add all of the scenes for your film. Again, by tapping the plus icon in the top right corner. I usually like to name my scenes based on its location. Also, make sure to add your scenes in chronological order, as Shotlister will automatically assign scene numbers based on the order you enter them in. Once you've entered a scene, Shotlister takes you to a page where you can add more info, such as if the scene is interior or exterior, the scene number, time of day, the correlating page number of the script, which shoot day the scene will be shot on, how many pages of the script the scene takes up, a color label if you want to color label it, how many cast members will be in the scene, and finally a note section for any notes you might have. Once you've filled out these settings, the next step is to add shots to your scene. This is where your storyboard and or shot list come in handy, as you can just copy all of that information into Shotlister. To add a shot, tap the plus button at the top right of the app. Here, I like to name my shot with the same shot name I plan to use on my slate. So for example, the first shot in scene one would be 1A. Once you've named your shot, Shotlister gives you a window to enter in more details about the shot. Here, you can add a description, include the setup number and camera, as well as flag it for various different special needs such as visual or special effects. You can also set the camera angle by tapping on size, as well as selecting any special gear or lenses for the shot. When you're done, tap save. Now, you'll notice Shotlister likes to automatically assign a shot name and prep number, but because I prefer to use my nickname field for my shot name, I like to turn these features off to prevent any confusion. To do this, tap on the settings icon in the top right corner and toggle off shot number and prep number. From here, you can also toggle on or off any of the various info settings you please. If you have the pro subscription, you can also toggle on storyboards, which enables you to import storyboard pictures for each shot. I'm going to toggle this on as I find it super helpful to see the visuals of each shot. When you're done, tap save. To add a storyboard, just tap the storyboard field and Shotlister allows you to import your storyboard images from either Dropbox or your phone library. Once you've gone through and added all of your shots to each scene, it's time to get to the real scheduling. You can do this by tapping on shoot day in the bottom right. Here, you can tap on a day to select it as a shoot day and add in information like a nickname. I usually like to nickname my shoot days day one, day two, and so on. You can also add in important times like your call, lunch, and wrap time. When you're done, click save, and if you have more shoot days, select another day and repeat the process. 
Once you've added all of your shoot days, tap on one of them to begin to add scenes to it. You can do this by tapping the plus icon at the top right, which will show you a window with all of your scenes to choose from. You can either select the check mark to the left of the scene to automatically select all of the shots, or you can tap on the scene to individually select which ones you'd like to add. Once you've made your selection, tap done. Now you can begin to order your shots in the order you want to shoot them in by tapping and holding on the shot to move it around. Once you've got them in an order that works best for you, you can start to assign time to each shot by tapping on the zero icon to the right. Here, you can use the slider to set how many minutes each shot might take. Now, the amount of time it takes to shoot each shot can vary greatly depending on the shots and how many pages of script it takes up. But I find the best approach is to pad your schedule with more time than you think you might need. This can be super helpful when you're running behind schedule because it allows you the ability to make up the extra time. And pro tip, it's pretty much normal for your shoot to be running behind in the morning. So do yourself a favor and pad that schedule. After doing several shoots, you'll begin to get a good feel for how long a shot might take. But until then, here's my recommendations. I've found that any time a shot takes up most of the scene, like a master shot, it usually takes between 30 to 45 minutes to shoot. Any time a shot requires a difficult camera setup or special effect, then I've found it can take about an hour to shoot. And finally, any time a shot takes up a relatively short amount of time, like an insert or establishing shot, it can take about 15 to 20 minutes to shoot. Once you've added in the times for each shot, it's time to add in blocks for everything else, like your setups, meal times, or whatever else you want to include. You can do this by tapping on the new note icon at the top right. Here, you can add a name and set a duration. Let's start with a block for setup, makeup, and wardrobe, and set it for 60 minutes. Once you've created your block, you can rearrange it in the schedule just like a shot by tapping, holding, and moving it up. Now here's a pro tip about scheduling setup times. I recommend you schedule anywhere between one to two hours of setup in the very beginning of your shoot day. This is because last minute snags with the location, cast, or crew can always pop up and it usually takes longer than expected to get things rolling. Also, the bigger the crew you have, the longer it will take for everyone to get set up. For all other setups that require big camera and lighting changes, I recommend giving yourself about 30 minutes to an hour, depending on the situation. Once you have your setups in place, I recommend you add blocks for meal times, cast call times if they vary, wardrobe and makeup changes, as well as giving yourself at least an hour of wrap time at the end of your shoot. With those placed in, ShotLister gives you a total time for your shoot, and you can now go through and tweak times if need be in order to make your day. And if you wanna share your schedule, you can export it using the share button in the top right corner. Here, you can choose all the features you wanna include, decide what format you want, and choose to send it via email or Dropbox. And once your shoot day comes, ShotLister will automatically start keeping track of time so that when you check off a shot, you can know exactly how long it took and how much time you're either running behind or ahead of schedule. Phew, now that I have ShotLister, I can use this calendar for something else. Oh no, I used Sharpie.